Warning! This podcast contains spoilers. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SCNI TV podcast for Gotham Season 1, Episode 12. I'm your host, Dom. Uh, what the little bird told, uh, told him is the name of the episode. I'm your host, Dom. With me is my raccoon hat, very unapproachable host, Nikki, <laughs> a.k.a. Omikins. Yeah. She's so unapproachable. Um, <laughs> Batman, secret I'm identity, Batman. Cleo. Oops. <gasps> Oops. I, oh, Gotham is ruined. I, I fucked it up. What did you do? I did. <laughs> You reveal my secret identity. I'm oh, I'm the God. worst Alfred ever. Yeah. And uh, wait, does that make me your servant? That's that's not gonna work. <laughs> and uh, and down there, down there, di- diagonally, is uh, is John. Hi, Hi I'm How's Barbara's it? number one fan. <laughs> God no, no. I started it. No. I started I every it. episode off. I started it. <laughs> Even when she dies. Yeah. Mentioned Barbara first. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, what did you guys think of this episode? I really liked it. It was really, really good. It was. But at the same time, there were a lot of things I didn't like about it. It was very good action packed, but a lot of the stories ended up culminating into almost nothing. And, uh, you know, really start getting. We see, we saw from the very first episode here, Fish. She kind of made her big move, and yeah, we all know she's gonna fail, you know, we because she's a made-up character, and we know Falcone is still running things by the time that Bruce is Batman, so Fish, obviously, we know can't win, but it's just, like, the whole point of this thing she did, this big plan, she executes it, and it's done in, like, five minutes. It, like, blow, blew up in her face. It's like, at first, Falcone is like, yeah, I'll, I'll leave, it's fine. Yep. See ya. It, it it failed because it was not a good plan in the first place. <laughs> it just like it was a terrible plan. It was, I remember seeing this from it was like awful. how many episodes ago? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, well, I mean, I thought that there would be something more, and there was literally nothing. No, that was her end game. <laughs> there was no other step. It was just lady who looks exactly like his mom. That was the plan. That was it. Yeah, that was, that was her big secret weapon. That was your she leverage? Thought, yeah, she thought that, you know, that would weaken him enough to be able to just sweep him under the rug and take over. But then why the hell did she have her beat the shit out of the other girl? Yeah. Like, I, I don't I don't understand the whole thing, and now just, Liza is dead on top of it all. Just, yeah, he fucking choked that bitch. He did. He did. He did not see that one coming. Just right no. down. Falcon's hardcore. He is, and then yeah. then he, you know, pulled a page out of the comics and, and threw the, the... It wasn't a rose, so to speak, yeah. but, you it know... It was a carnation. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it still had the same effect, you know. Right. It, was, it was ripped right out of the comics, but... Um, it was just, like, things like that. Like, uh, Falcon... Uh, not Falcon, um... Fish, this whole time, has shown, like, this deep hatred for... Uh, Falcon and how she's gonna overthrow him and all this stuff, and then this entire episode, all she did was show him compassion and sympathy. Is oh, you can just leave. I'm not gonna kill you, you know. Like it seemed like she wanted him dead up until this point, and then this one episode, it's like she changed her mind, showed him sympathy, and it only ended up saving her ass in the the long run because she showed him sympathy. Is why he locked her and Butch away instead of killing them off like he did the rest of her staff. Yeah, I mean. It, I, she never once said she wanted to kill Falcone. It was all she just wanted to overthrow. Want him gone. That's all. She's yeah. Gone. So she's she's never said she wanted him dead. I I guess I've been under the impression this whole time that she wanted yeah. him dead. So it seemed like this whole plan just kind of fell flat in its face to me. Yeah. It did. I mean, <laughs> it was a poor. Poorly thought out plan, and her end game was ass- based all on assumptions. Like she really just didn't think uh, anything through. I, I don't under- I just don't understand. 
She was assuming that Liza this whole time was completely faithful to her, had no way to check that, had no other person on the inside to be like to keep tabs on her. Right. How hard would that have been for her to do? Like I, not I just very. <laughs> like, she had other people on his side, but none of them were in his household. No. It, it just like you you he he loves you, right? And and you're you didn't do anything that I wouldn't want you to do? I uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. there's something you're not telling me. No, no, no there isn't. Okay. No. Okay. Bye. She, she <laughs> clearly grew feelings for Falcone, you know. So yeah. That's what it came down nice. to. And, uh, you know, she's like, he's never touched me one way or the other. You know, it was just, you yeah. know, he's, he's been a perfect gentleman and she started falling for him. She respected that. And, you know, you could really see it at that moment when they were having the conversation out where Falcone was standing under the umbrella the entire time. And she's like, I'll take like a quarter of this umbrella. It's okay. But, <laughs> you know, he's some gentleman. So but, rude. Yeah. But um, she's like, no, I don't want to you to give me like a bakery or whatever i like i i want to be with you i want to stay with you i don't care you know so you saw like at that moment that's where we knew for sure that she fell for him but i don't know this whole thing with fish though the <clears throat> only the only way this can be redeemed is if this turns out to be another penguin double cross if penguin was working with fish the whole time and fish is exactly where she wants to be yeah, I was going to say, I mean, there was somebody on the inside the whole time. Double, double cross. But mm -hmm. um, she didn't make nice with him, so she could have found things out, but... Uh, well, she also... Did she know that Penguin was back mm. with Falcone and double-crossing Maroney? Mm. She doesn't no? know about the double-cross with Maroney, <clears throat> but she knows that he's back because Penguin's oh. popped into the club a few times to, mm -hmm. like, smell her and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know. If she would have been like, if she would have just like been like, okay, whatever. I mean, I'm pretty sure she's had lackeys turn her in before. Come on, <laughs> if she didn't hate so much. She would have had you know some inside information. You'd think. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know where she, her character can possibly go from here. I almost feel like it was better off to just kill her right then and there. Um, I don't her know. Her entire staff is dead. It's just her and Butch left. So even if she does escape or come back or whatever the case is, she's going to be completely powerless. She's got no one. Well, she... Hmm, well, the Penguin wants to overthrow both Maroney and Falcone, so I mm -hmm. figure he's going to succeed with Maroney. Yeah. Yeah. Even though yeah. Maroney's been proving he's not as big of an idiot as I thought originally. Yeah. He's still probably going down. Yeah. So um, I assume yeah. the penguin will try to get fish on his side again. Yeah, and I mean, this also kind of introduced uh, the club that fish has been operating out of. It, it seems like this is going to be penguin's club now. Like, that's yeah. the impression that I got, is he's taking over now. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be kind of cool. It's going to be club penguin. Mm -hmm. oh, get your God. accounts ready. Stop it. Stop it. It's gonna fail as a nightclub and just become like a disheveled hovel that he makes a nest in. Scratches himself in. Yeah. <laughs> makes a nest in. <laughs> Nurtures his little nest egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Has um, the freaking air conditioning on all the goddamn time? <laughs> <laughs> on high. So, Stop what do you guys Freeze. think of. <laughs> <laughs> What did you guys think of uh, the executioner? Uh, the electrocutioner. The the electro executioner. Oh, he's, he's fucking fabulous. I mean, he's he's the Swede, so mm. <laughs> I is. don't think I've hated him in anything he's ever been in. Ooh, he was. Well, I've loved his acting. He's played some characters that are very hateable. Oh yes. Oh, as Lee Silver absolutely points out in chat, and we haven't seen Lee in a while. Iceberg uh, welcome back, Lounge. Lee. Yes, the Iceberg Lounge. And that, that is something right. in Gotham, so yes, we, we very well could see that. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, But yeah, the, the Electrocutioner, I don't know, for for making him into this big villain or whatever, he seemed really terrible at killing people. Uh, well, he killed one guy. He doesn't two. want... He killed two. No, That's not one. His goal, one. The guy, the guy the who guy opened the, the door. door. Yeah, that's the it. left. He just rest. He just stunned or 
yeah. maimed. That's yeah. not that's not his goal. Like, I mean, I think his goal was to. Well, with the bomb, that was like disappointing because I was expecting half of Maroni's men to be dead. Because he was trying to kill Maroni with that, right? I mean, that looked like a very elaborate bomb. Yeah. That did it was probably nothing a bomb but that like. Like knew how to make. It did nothing but like. Make them red in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and give penguin brain damage. <laughs> I mean, he's already had brain the damage. So. I have to go meet Falcone. Excuse me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wendell Marshall is saying in chat he has a history of jobbing out. I'm not sure if he's referring to uh, the electrocution or the penguin. Um. Ah, oh, the penguin. He's getting he's one punch by Batman most of the time he meets him. I'm assuming that's the penguin because I, I I've known that to be the case with the penguin a lot of times. He's one punch. Yeah, so. I mean, what look means at him. Guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the the scene was hysterical. You know, the penguin of him going out the door, or whatever. He's like talking to Falcone in Maroni's uh, building, you know, and then he goes and oh, oh my mother's sick, I gotta go, and then <laughs> goes flying backwards, and yeah. then him in the ambulance. I, I gotta go see Falcone. <laughs> That's like... Myrna's just like, I'm sorry? <laughs> what did you say? Oh, Wendell said it, he's actually talking about the executioner. It's okay, the she electric, said a fever dream. The electrocutioner, sorry. Come on, Dom, it's a pun. You should I, you should get this. It's, it's not really a pun, but it is. A little is. bit of a pun. It is. Speaking of puns... To play on words. Speaking of puns, what about Nigma's terrible cupcake riddle? I was, I was looking at it and I was like, "Red velvet bullet, velvet revolver." Okay. What the fuck are you trying Nig to say? Velvet. That's what I thought. I'm like, I thought it was velvet he, revolver. just a fan, fan of Scott Weiland and Slash. I don't like. <laughs> My <laughs> instant reaction was, "Don't bite that's the bullet." It's not a riddle. I was like, "Don't bite the bullet." That's what it's got to be. That, but that wasn't a riddle. Yeah. It wasn't. That was... I mean, clearly the <laughs> obvious answer there was uh, a beautiful woman is a dangerous thing. That's clearly the oh, obvious really? answer. You know? But that's, that's not, not a riddle. riddle. That's a... That's a... Uh, uh, that's symbolism. Right. The writers see, a riddle, don't know what a fucking riddle is. See, okay, I'm gonna give you a riddle right now. What is broken as soon as you mention it? Your face! <laughs> no. <laughs> The answer is silence. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah, that's a riddle. See, that's you want a, a riddle, riddle, guys. Read the Hobbit. Read the Hobbit. <laughs> I, All I can say yeah. is that cupcake looked delicious, and I wanted to eat it. That's with the, the only bullet, thing. What, you know, with the bullet in it. Cupcake actually looked a little like it got smushed. Like, what has gold inside, but no lock to contain it? Uh, <laughs> it's an egg. See, it's a riddle. It's a riddle. So basically Humpty Dumpty? Yeah. I mean, I the mean, original poem, they <laughs> never mentioned the fact that he was an egg, and it, it was a, a riddle, in fact, so. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I think I just blew Nikki's mind. <laughs> I'm going to stop drinking now before something funny is said, and uh, I spew <laughs> all, over, all over everything, so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... But the one thing that we did learn from Nigma, kids, always wear your rubbers. You know. Oh, that's oh, right. You want to stay safe. You wear your rubbers. Your uh, your standard issue rubber. Yep. Mhm. Mm make sure, make sure you wear your rubbers. I paused at that moment because I could not handle it. I was done in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's lines like sure. that. That I love the Riddler for, and then it's things like the cupcake that I can't stand. I know, I don't get it. Like, like he's this this fine balance of fuck you and I love you. That it's just like <laughs> okay, I guess you're okay. <laughs> That's about no, it. Like, you're okay. There's something going wrong in the writers' room. There is. When you don't know what a fucking riddle is, when a room full of writers doesn't know what a riddle is. <laughs> That's a know. problem. Isn't there like a book in the bookstore? It's just called like a thousand and one riddles for kids. Can't they just they crack it open, thumb to a page, and be like, "Yep, that one." That's Wait, do they have a PO box? Can we send them 
Oh, a book I don't of know. Child riddles. Ooh, Ooh. I would. In a heartbeat. Dear I'm, Gotham writers. Just a stern Here's letter. <laughs> I think I think we should do that. We'll make a YouTube video of us packing up books of children's riddles and mailing it to to Gotham. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. This is what riddles are. Please. <laughs> Please use one. Please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have Nigma say this. This one's. We'll just circle our favorites. We, like we'll just say we've taken the liberty to highlight some of our favorites for you. <laughs> it's all one thousand and one. And I'm not saying that other iterations of the Riddler have had the most clever riddles ever, ever, ever. But at least they were riddles. Yeah. They can't be sparkly, shiny gold every time. But I mean, he's right. just no, no, he's always spewing shit in this show. Like not even a limerick. Uh, I, I, it would. It anything. would also. It would also be something different if Nigma, like, if he wasn't into riddles yet, you know, and yeah, he was yeah. just like saying, I "What mean, if this?" Blah blah blah. Even but Batman he's really saying these are riddles. Even I'm Batman not. Forever knew what a riddle was. <laughs> like yeah. some of the worst Batman movies of all times. <laughs> like they didn't they, know. They, I, I still remember the "You're as blind as a bat." You know, like, that was actually a riddle that I don't remember what the riddle leading up to it was. But the answer was, was being as blind as a bat. And that was clearly a riddle. It was well thought out. It was, it was very good. These, for someone as smart as Enigma, he shouldn't even be saying this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and like we've said before, we've seen other scenes that he's really good in, like the scene when he was listening to the radio five the episodes best. back. That's, like, my favorite ep scene with the Riddler so far. It's the most telling of any of the ones he's been in. It's right. like the... It's said the most. Right. But the whole point of the cupcake and the beautiful woman is a dangerous thing is he's trying to uh, win over uh, Miss Kringle's love. And he's getting shot down by her. He's getting shot down by other detectives in the thing. He's getting pushed out, you know, strong-armed out. And uh, do you think this is what's going to snap the Riddler into, like, leading his life of crime? Is, is uh, the the broken heart? <clears throat> that would be I really hope dumb. not. Yeah, that'd be really dumb. It's I dumb. mean, <laughs> we've already seen she doesn't want anything to do with him mm -hmm. a couple times. So, I mean... I mean, she seemed so... semi-interested after he explained the riddle to her. Yeah. And I don't know if she's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, she smiled. I couldn't tell if it was working or not. I don't it know. might have just been I, like... <laughs> I, I, I just... Uh, yeah, like that. Exactly. That. I feel like at this point they're just like trying to get like the... We need a quirky, dorky character. And they're just like ticking their box for like their equivalent of Sheldon for the show. Mm -hmm. And I don't... I don't like it. He he needs to be his own thing. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> Lee Silver in chat is saying, here's a classic riddle from Batman's 19, 1966 first episode. What is it no man wants to have, but no man wants to lose? And the answer is is a lawsuit. But that, that's, that's a riddle. Yeah, that's, yeah it know? is a riddle. That's just... Recycle some Gotham if you need to. Just make them actual Please. riddles. We don't care. Just real riddles. Like I, I, when I heard the beautiful woman is a dangerous thing, I was like, really? I, I honestly thought it was don't bite the bullet or something like that. You know? Yeah, like something you know, clever. And, and <laughs> even that is not even not a riddle. even clever, but just an actual riddle. Not because yeah. that's symbolism. Yeah, There's exactly. no way you right. could logically put those together. No. 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 Um, you know, but the, but don't wear your rubber, or wear your rubbers thing, that, that, that ended up saving Gordon's, um, life, basically. You know, he was the only yeah. one that... Well, ended up saving Maroney's life. Well, yeah, but, it, but also Gordon, he was the only one who was able to, uh, walk around in the precinct after they shocked the place, so... Yeah, yeah, but none of the officers died. Right, right, right. No, they, they were, were just, just knocked out. Knocked out. Um, but how funny was, uh... Gordon tossing a glass of water on, on him. It's like, oh. it's like, like, it's so funny. It's I like, loved it. 
I was like, just really? Like, That's how you defeated him? You just threw a glass of water at him? I mean, yep. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Do what you gotta do. It's exposed wires and circuitry. It's just like, I mean, I'm not gonna punch you. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Have a drink. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And like, he didn't even give like a cheesy one-liner. It's like, I just don't like to lose. Blish. Okay, bye. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, played it like a champ. I mean, we got some good backstory in the electrocutioner here. Uh, you know, we we found out, you know, he had done a bank robbery job with Maroney. You know, that was his motivation for all of this. You know, he failed at taking Maroney out of the nightclub. He, he failed at taking him out of the police station, which if you fail to take him out of a, a, a club <clears throat> like that with six armed guards, do you really think you're going to walk into a, a full police station and, and take him out? You know, that's just... Well, the point was to annihilate everyone inside. I guess. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. But, you know, he ended up uh, not winning in the end. He seems like he's, he's locked up for good right now. Uh, he's probably not going back to Arkham. Um, because the security there is shit. But the security's always been shit in that place, so... Uh, yeah. They, I mean, with all the technology they're eventually going to get when, you know, Bruce gets older. Yeah. It's still just... <laughs> Now, in the comics, I, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this last week or not, but in the comics, um, the original Electrocutioner was Lester uh, Bukinski. We yes. learn that um, the Electrocutioner in Gotham here, his last name was Bukinski. However, his first name was Jack. Um, in the comics, Lester did, in fact, have a brother who also played the role of the Electrocutioner, but never had a first name. So that very well could be the Lester's precursor. brother. Yeah. 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 So so we we may um we may in fact get to see a return of an electrocutioner, which kind of be cool. Yeah. So um for all his big, you know, his his well done work and all that. I mean, Gordon basically forced himself onto this case, but um, you know, for everything that he did, he ended up getting himself uh reinstated. Um and all the while, Harvey's in the background like, why me? Yeah. <laughs> Don't lump me in with him. <laughs> I mean, Harvey has some of the best scenes. Like, I just love yeah. anything he's involved in. You I thought remember... you were being careful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's really likable now, even though he's still such an ass. But I remember in the beginning. We hated him. We did not like him at all. Yeah. It wasn't I until the backstory episode. An ass. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't until that backstory episode where we find out, found out why he was an ass that I think mm -hmm. it kind of... It, I don't know if it enlightened us to him or if they've actually just changed uh, his character for the better because there's something different about him even more so. It just seemed like he was being a dick for absolutely no reason in the beginning, and now he's still being a dick, but he's like a lighthearted dick. See, I think in that exact same episode... We got, they re revealed why he was being an ass, but he also changed for the better because of Gordon's influence. Right. Right. So that's all. Not what he used to be. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's all carried over, and, and we, we definitely have uh, a different Bullock since then, and I, I, I do, in fact, like him. So. Yeah. But, um. Unlike some other character who just keeps getting worse. Yeah, we'll get to her in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, John. Not yet. Oh. We'll get to her in a second. <laughs> But yeah, Gordon got reinstated. He had some big bold words for the commissioner. You know, the the first time he yeah. saw him, he because they've mentioned him a few times. Yeah. But but this is the first time we've seen him, and Gordon's like, oh, "It takes now for you to show up." Like, where you been, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, and he's like, uh, he pulls him into the office. You know, whatever. And then at the end. He goes, you know, I don't care who it is next time. If anyone tries to take my shield, they're going to eat it. Gonna and, eat it uh, yeah. <clears throat> and then that's when, when Harvey is like, you thought you were being, uh, what, what, what you, you were being careful? Yeah, you thought you were being careful? <laughs> this whole, he repeated it like three you times. Thought which you thought you were it... being careful. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but I like this because it's kind of reflective of what, uh, what he expects of a commissioner, and he's obviously a very hands-on commissioner when he does become right. one. So, you know, you can see it now that he is, you know, he's going to do it differently, and he absolutely does, as we, as we know. 
So. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we also had some scenes from uh, our favorite character. One. I Did think it was we? One scene. <laughs> it was one scene, I think. We we did. Mm-hmm. Who, who, Didn't we? <laughs> who, who could that be, John? Uh, it's not Macklemore. <laughs> nope. Nope. And Rihanna. It's not Rhea. It's mm. it's Barbara. <laughs> the real electrocutioner. <laughs> My God. The destroyer of worlds and men. <laughs> she will be our folly. And our downfall. Mm-hmm. So, what'd you guys uh, what'd you guys think of Barbara? I... She's running home to her mommy and daddy. Her mommy and daddy are assholes. They are. End of story. That's literally all that happened. But <sighs> but, but the one thing that's interesting that I, I found with Barbara's parents is they don't like her either. <laughs> no so, one does. So they redeem themselves with that one quality alone. Yeah. <laughs> What's this stain doing? I mean, Lee, Lee's asking why can't they give Barbara dialogue like they give Les- the, the doctor. Yeah. Because Barbara is a horribly written character, that's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm has. convinced. I'm convinced that they have some sort of structure in the writer's room for Gotham where the people who are writing certain lines are just bad. No, like you. This is this is a technique that you've heard in a lot of uh, different shows and stuff that they use. They they literally just write a bunch of words up on a wall and throw darts at it, and whatever words stick is they try to string sentences together. Is this really? Is it true? Yeah, it's a hundred percent true. <laughs> I totally didn't just make it up for right now. No, that's <laughs> that's how they come up with Barbara's lines. Yeah. No, but I'm I'm also I'm also that's referring why. to. Nick- like some That's... of Nigma's lines are terrible, but then some of them are good, and it's like, who are you letting write the bad lines? Fire that person. It's yeah. like that's why her, you know, lines are toxic starfish, <clears throat> Gordon love phone. Toxic starfish. <laughs> Where'd the starfish come from? Shh. <laughs> I'll go with it. That's a better line than what I've heard in like all the episodes. But that's basically what she boils down to. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't know I don't yeah. know I don't uh, her parents are dicks and that's why she's a dick I, I mean it. yeah the, Wendell but Marshall's like, saying in chat right now he goes I can see why Barbara, Barbara turned out the way she did they are terrible apathetic parents yeah and and then Lee follows it up with wait when was Barbara in this episode that's how rememberable right. you know that's how memorable Barbara is wait like, let is, me just let me just say know. before we started the show I was like. Wait, was Barbara in this episode? I was in the same boat because yeah. I just completely block her now, out of my mind now. Yeah. This is the thing. I only remembered she was in the episode because I, I like I knew she had that scene, but I forgot it was this it was in this episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like and I get it, like your your parents were negligent to you emotionally or even physically or whatever, and that led you to be a very needy attention wanting person attention whore. and that explains your behavior like, yes i'm toxic <laughs> but so she does all these horrible stupid things for attention like i'm gonna go to the gangster's house and just give him a stern talking to and he's gonna let my boyfriend go yeah um so i get it but you're still an ass <laughs> and i don't like you yeah i mean <laughs> I, I i appreciate them trying to give a backstory and try to explain it but it still doesn't justify 99 no. percent of her actions you know <laughs> it, it justifies why she sits around and does drugs all day yeah you know that's that's about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, i just want to really feel about like it that. you know it also explains why she doesn't feel like she has to work Ever or go yeah. to the art gallery where she apparently I mean, works. Her, her parents are loaded. <laughs> They're probably paying for her place to begin with, you know. Just so that she's not in the house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they, they clearly didn't want her there. <laughs> they barely I mean, wanted her to spend the night, let alone. Oh, I was thinking about staying for a few days, and her parents were very clear. Oh, you could stay uh, till the weekend. You know, stay in like the living room, I guess. 
Just don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> it feel you look you look sticky. I did are get you, the are you sticky? <laughs> I did get the impression that they like Jim though. Mm-hmm. I think so. Cause I'm the, your commissioner friend is no. he uh, still around? <laughs> I got the impression they liked her dating a man. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's oh probably my it. god. Probably. That, like, oh, yeah. probably she, yeah. that makes so, like, so much sense now. Man, and she's like, "We're fine. We're, we're fine." I'm like, yeah, because oh, they they, they do didn't seem like, like very when she was with ladies. Yeah, they yeah. do seem like very closed mind parents, and that's probably now, why they pushed her out to begin with. Now let me paint you. A picture here. What if they were great parents and she's just a shitty kid and she just made them hate her? It very well could be that too. That could be it as well. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. I do like the fact though that she lied to them about Jim. So. Smart. Mm -hmm. I banged my ex-girlfriend and did a bunch of drugs and now I'm here. I'm Mm -hmm. out of money. (laughs) More or less. Can I have a sandwich? I mean... And I know, like, I can tell, I can see the future, because Barbara and Jim didn't technically break up, she just left. Right. Mm-hmm. So I have a feeling when she goes back and finds out he's he's macking on Dr. Lady. Macking on Leslie. She's gonna get upset. Barbara's gonna get upset, and it's like, whoa, 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 bitch. <laughs> she doesn't have any room to be upset no. after what but she she's did. she's gonna. Me. Oh, yeah, of course she is. No, she's so she's gonna have a fucking meltdown. Yeah, Please, just, make like, us hate her more, because we can't hate anymore. It's just impossible. Seriously. See, like, you guys I all forgot hate about hate Barbara this episode, but me, as soon as I, I saw her, I go, here's what we're talking about on the podcast this week. <laughs> 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 Nikki, Drilled remember, into my head. There was, an, there was an episode where I was like, I'm, I'm done with my feelings of rage for Barbara, and then I went on a rant, and I was like, at the end of it, I was like, oh, I'm not done. Nope. Oh. <laughs> no, oh, we, that's how the rest of the season is gonna be. We think we I can't be here anymore. I was being really sarcastic when I just said that because <laughs> we obviously can hate her more. Because if they're gonna make so many, she's gonna make so many more stupid mistakes, and mm-hmm. it's just gonna, you know, skyrocket past the limit. Yeah, there's there's no limits of hate when it comes to Barbara. No, <laughs> no. It really isn't. It's not. No, but uh, so as we mentioned, we saw Jim and Leslie's first big kiss you know whatever and, and we also get to finally see jim's place he's uh he's totally living in the police station so mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. apparently he was living in gotham or arkham beforehand and now he's living in the G- yeah. C- gpcd when we, when we saw him in arkham he, he just like was sleeping on the couch with the files in GCPD. front of him it's like you yeah. haven't gone home in a while have you <laughs> no he, i mean he probably stumbles into the apartment just to like get clothes or something but yes lee lee thank you yeah lee says barbara can't tell the difference between a 12 year old girl and a grown woman she's not even 12 i forgot about that she's six <laughs> she's, like, she six? she's not 12 i don't no, know if she's six. she's like six or seven she's no, i'd say she's, she's, not even a, she's she's got to be about eight yeah maybe she's eight yeah no i thought she was closer to, to cat's age than we thought no she was young she was a little girl when her dad died. Yeah. So, I, yeah, she's, it's just, I, I want Jim and Leslie to be together, and I yeah. want them to make beautiful children and have a wonderful life. And I mean, I, we I all just, know that he's going to end not, up with a girl named Barbara. No, I want this to be the one thing that do we know. Do we really know? I thought he they were trying to take this a completely different way. He doesn't have to, because it's yeah. not... The wife Barbara that becomes Batgirl. It is the it's daughter. His nie- no, it's his niece. niece. It's his well, niece Barbara. I, sometimes it's his daughter. Uh, all right, yeah. It, this depends. this Barbara would not even make a good Batgirl. Of course not. I no, don't, I don't want to see that. Never is never Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, but no, I'm no, saying we his... know that his wife in the comics in all the iterations of the TV show, his wife is named Barbara. We know yeah, this. That doesn't have to stay. There's two Barbaras mm-hmm. though. <laughs> right. So it doesn't matter. There's multiple Barbaras. There's got to be. He and Leslie can just get together, make Change a baby. Change her name to Barbara legally. Make, make her d- the daughter's name Barbara, and she'll be back, girl. It'll be great. Can I say at my job, I met a Barbara, and I had to try really hard not to go Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very, impressive. very hard. Barbara. Barbara. The, um, the other thing of, of noteworthy 
mentions um, was Leslie, her entire reason for going back to see um, Jim in the first place was to get this doll that she had given him before. Um, it was some pagan doll thing that they did supposedly in, supposedly in the asylum or whatever. In the comics, there is a character named Samantha the Witch, uh, who is a pagan witch who appeared in um, Arkham Asylum Tales of Madness. So that could be a nod to that. That could be something that we see in the future. Um, or it could just be just simply a nod that they're just saying, yeah, we're acknowledging that this exists and never go explore it. Because it seems like they do that a lot in this show. Well, they leave themselves some threads for future seasons, I suppose. So, yeah. Which, also on the bright side, Gotham has in fact been renewed for season two. That's right. So that is a cool. plus. That is a plus. I think they need to cut some of that dead weight on the writer staff. Mm. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I know I know this is getting ahead of ourselves. Not next week, but the week after, we're going to be introduced to uh, Scarecrow. So. And Robin's dad, apparently, at some point, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Robin's father yeah, has been cast. That. If he's not a trapeze artist, I, I, we riot. <laughs> if he's not in the circus. If he's not in the circus, we riot. I mean, it could be pre-circus days. We don't know. All right. We don't know. Uh, you guys have anything else for this episode before we go into next week's synopsis? I kind of miss Bruce. I want him to come back. Yeah, I mean, Lee yeah. actually just mentioned in here, uh, he goes, he had to go back in the episode uh, because he didn't even notice Barbara was in there, but he did notice that Bruce wasn't in for the second straight week. But I mean, I, I didn't notice, and I don't feel there... I don't feel a vacuum in his absence. I think. It's oh, no, no, no. Right. I didn't mean to imply that. I just... Mm -hmm. I just want to see what he's up to, I guess. <laughs> you want to see you, Brucey? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it'd be nice even, to see what he's up to. Because this is going to happen soon. Yeah. The, uh, the other he's thing... Like, well. <laughs> yeah, the other thing that I'm thinking of is just based on the what we know about child actors is he very well could have been he's uh, aging <laughs> a little bit faster. So yeah. they've, they've intentionally been keeping him away right now so they could advance the timeline. Right, they can just time skip a little. Yeah, yeah. so that that may be it, but we recently saw Catwoman, but we don't know when that was actually recorded. Same thing with Ivy. You know, that could be stuff that they, they had that they just couldn't fit into an episode somewhere and just shoehorned it in because it didn't really tie in with any actual plot, so it could have just been like a deleted scene that they'd slipped in there just to keep us remembering or something. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, next week... Uh, the episode is called Welcome Back, Jim Gordon. Uh, when, key witness, when, when the key witness in a homicide ends up dead while being held for questioning by the police, Gordon suspects that it's an inside job and looks to an old friend for information. Meanwhile, Oswald Cobblepot takes control of one of Fish Mooney's prized possessions uh, as she gets a small taste of her own medicine. So, Aggressive bondage? Yeah, more or less. Okay. I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> I don't know. We we we're assuming that her prized possession is um the club. The club. The club. Yeah. Or Butch. Butch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Penguin takes control of Butch. Him. She's got two things. That's <laughs> that's it. And a dress. I mean. Oh, a dress. No, Maybe the dress changes her. every scene. She has many dresses. Does well, she only gets one in prison, damn it. Yeah, that's true. Maybe they scalp her and then Penguin has a new hairdo. <gasps> Gross. Ow. I don't think you have to scalp her, though. I'm pretty sure it's a weave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Very well fake. could be. Yes. Um, Lee's also saying we're, we're going to get Bruce and Selena next week. So, welcome back. Preemptively. Mm. Yay! Yep. I want to see more develop out of that because uh, they are adorable together. Mm hmm. They are. And they'll grow to be enemies. Were they ever actually enemies? It seemed no, like they were more really. competitive rival you yeah, know, kind of thing. Well, it's, and she's... she can be an antagonist because she's a thief. And he's right. Like, can't do that. Her per per per. It's like, I can just pay for whatever you need. <laughs> Do you need yeah. cat food? Here, here's cat food. Here's all of it. I bought the company. 
<laughs> that sounds so adorable. <laughs> Stop robbing banks. God. John, where can the people find you buying the lifetime supply of Meow Mix? Uh, uh, no more, no more. Also known as Barber Fan number three. After, you know, one and two. Jim is one. <laughs> and, uh, what's your face? The MCU lady. Yep. I don't think she's, she's a fan she's anymore. Two. Uh, all right. Maybe I maybe I jumped up to one now. No, you you very well may may be Barbara fan number one. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. I, I'm gonna tweet it. I'm gonna tweet a picture of the superior Barbara. Oh, uh oh, guys, yeah. look out for that. Go go check at no more no more right <laughs> Is that now. A Barbara dick pic. You yeah. got... What? No. No. <laughs> no, that's disturbing. Whoa. Cleo, where can the people find <laughs> your obsession with dick pics? Kiyomoto, uh, following no more, no more. <laughs> Dick Grayson, Dick Clark, Dick Van Dyke, all those famous dick pics. Right? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Omi, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter at Lady Venom Twenty Four. Lady Y V E N O M Twenty Four. You can find me down below at Phenomenon. P H E N O M E D O M. I, I gave you the pause, Cleo. That's your cue. I gotta wait for when you're talking so I can interrupt you. <laughs> you can also find us on <laughs> Facebook, Gmail, G, Twitter, my, um, MySpace, and uh, right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. Um, make sure to join us here live every week and. Uh, if you can't make the show live, go check on our YouTube channel for our scheduled events and leave a comment in there, and we will do our best to answer it on the show. Uh, until next week, see you guys later. Bye. Barbara? Bye, Barbara. Bye, Barbara. Never come back. Barbara loves you.